and welcome to another episode of Coin Talk with the Hollenbex. I'm Hannah, and I will be the only one today as I wanted to talk about world coins, and that's my specialty here at Hollenbeck Coin Gallery in Colorado Springs, coin capital of the world. I just want to do a brief overview today because obviously there's a lot of countries that have a lot of different coins. And so people ask me, you know, what makes a world coin valuable? Well, just like the United States Red Book, we have catalogs, reference guides for how a world coin will be valued. And these are by the century. Look how big that is next to my head here. And so this one right here, there's kind of some rules of thumb before I'll even crack this out here, because that's a lot of time we need to spend together. First thing is if it's the equivalent of you going on vacation in the 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, and you spend the dollar coins, you spend the half dollars and quarters, and you bring home the pennies and nickels, chances are that kind of stuff is exactly like your 1980s pocket change in the US. That's not worth a lot of money. And so right here, we will buy those base metal world pocket change by the pound and sell it by the pound. Really fun, great way to, for kids to learn history, geography, uh, inflation sometimes, but not worth a lot of money, you know? So someone's like right here, a Mexican peso. Well, they went through a monetary reform. Uh, and so some of these are good and some of them are bad. But a lot of times you won't be able to do an exchange with an exchange place uh, like a bank or in the airport because of how heavy some of this weighs. You know, if you were to get a wheelbarrow of Canadian nickels and you take it all the way from Colorado to Canada, your backpack's a million pounds and those nickels are good for, you know, one meal out, it's not really worth it for the exchange places or for folks like us um, to be paying you that exchange rate. So they're gonna be a little bit lower a lot of times, more just treating it like the bulk coins here. There are also, you know, world errors and varieties, just like US coins, but it does depend on the country and the clarity. And so if you see something on the internet, I always say, always, always, always be skeptical. The old British pounds here, the cute little cakes, nice and heavy. Well, there's more fakes than reals out there because it was so easy to strike these coins. So if you bring me one and you say it's off center, you know, if you spin it, her head's at this angle versus this angle, I'm gonna be really, really skeptical because if the chances are here, you might have a fake instead of an error. So we're gonna need to do a lot more research together. So let me put those right there. And same thing as an exchange, three pounds right here. It gets heavy in your backpack pretty quick. But like the US, in the world, they did have circulated silver coins on the day-to-day -day basis. Just like how the US stopped in 64 and said it's getting too expensive, that's how the rest of the world was too. And some countries like Great Britain even earlier in the 40s versus some like the Canadians a little bit later into the late 60s. But it does depend on the country. The Mexicans here have a wide variety from 10% fine silver up to 90% silver comparable to a Morgan silver dollar. And so it does depend on the coin itself. But if you hear that nice clink, put it aside, get it double checked because if it's silver, it's gonna be way better than the base metal world coins. And that's really as we get a little bit older. Canadians have the silver dollars just like Americans. And they used a little bit less fine silver. With the small denominations, the dimes and the quarters, you can actually run a magnet over it and their new ones will stick to a magnet. The old dimes and quarters, Canadian, will not. So that'll be a good way for you to just see if you have some silver Canadian. That'll be a lot more valuable than just base metal stuff, of course, for the silver. And then there's so many genres. Leave a comment below on what you specifically want to see. I like some of the old shipwreck coins, the Spanish eight reals, the new world money, because the Americans were so innovative in our base 10 system compared to this old eight reals, your eight bits, your fractionals of stuff that you needed to keep a lot of math up here. And the shipwrecks are really cool. Right here, I have one that's just raw, but you might have heard of some of the shipwrecks that are really famous. El Cazador, for example, has a lot that are packaged. Unfortunately, this one, I cannot prove if it was from a specific wreck or not. And so that NGC certification or PCGS official grading will increase the value of this because it's been pinpointed down. Once it's loose like this though, or if, you know, if it got broken out of its specific holder, then you can no longer prove it again. 
again. And so with these, you know, the most important thing is if you can see a date and the denomination, that's going to increase the value right away. Florida is really the capital, of course, of shipwreck coins. And so sometimes, you know, uh, if you have a big collection of those, that might be the place to take them. Out here in Colorado, we just don't have very many shipwrecks. And then last thing I wanted to talk about was certification. Just like American coins, you can certify world's coins, ancient coins, you name it. And just like American coins, some stuff will not be worth grading, but you can. It won't increase the value, but you can. And some it will help because you're looking for that specific grade. Just like an American coin where the price increases on the grade, you want to see those nicer detailed coins, you know, as you get older uh, and same thing. You want the nice extra fine instead of something damaged, extra fine details or hairlines. And so you can absolutely, and I do send world coins to certify when they hit about the hundred dollar point so that it's verified authenticity so that the customer will always agree that we're seeing the same number on the grading. And this makes it a lot easier to sell online because people know, yep, that's a good coin. You can track it by the number and that helps as a resource. You know, you can check to see where this coin has been. And so sometimes, you know, check these out on the website. I always do try and have a little bit of the better coins on there for a broader population to see it. Um, there tends to be a little bit bigger buy sell spread on world coins just because here in the United States, you know, 99 of 100 people walking in my door want something American or bullion. They're not a collector for world. Uh, a great example is the German coins. They're so regional specific. If you're from Berlin, you like Berlin coins, you don't care about Hamburg coins. And so you gotta find the right buyer. It can absolutely be worth it, but it might take some more time. So give me a like if you liked this video, if you learned something new, drop a comment below on what you want to hear more about. If it's just Canadian, just British, or world error, shipwreck, let me know what you want to hear more about, and I'll see you next time.